I'm Caroline, and I'm reading How Full Is Your Bucket by Tim Rath and Mary Reckmeyer. Felix was putting one of the last locks on his tower when his little sister came in. I want to build with you, she said. Felix scowled. Go away. You're too little. I'm big. Stay back. You'll knock it over. I can be very careful. Go play with your baby doll, Xana. Quack! Grandpa! Grandpa shook his head. Felix, you just dipped from your sister's bucket. Like everyone else, Anna has an invisible bucket. When it's empty, she feels bad. But when it's full, she feels great. Didn't you ever notice your own bucket? Invisible bucket? Hmm. Sometimes Felix couldn't quite tell when his grandfather was joking. But the next morning, when Felix woke up, there it was. A small gray bucket floating above his head. When Felix came down to have breakfast, his mom was in a hurry. I've got a meeting this morning, and it's almost time to go. Anna, sit still. Felix slipped and cocoa wheat scattered across the floor. Felix, yelled his mom, you should have used a stool to reach that. Felix could feel his bucket tip and big invisible drops spill out. Drip, drip. Ha ha, Anna laughed as she crunched the cereal with her shoe. Get the broom and clean that up before you miss the bus, scolded Mom. With the school bus honking, Felix quickly swept up the cocoa weeds and grabbed the last blueberry muffin. But before he could even take a bite, Buster jumped up and grabbed the muffin from his hand. Drip. Hey look, at Felix's new backpack. My baby brother has one just like it. Drip. Psst. Felix. Drip. Watch out, shrimp. Drip. It was still morning, and Felix's bucket felt almost empty. As he watched his classmates walk into the room, he secretly hoped they'd trip and fall. That's what it feels like when you have an empty bucket. Felix slumped in his seat and waited for something else bad to happen. Mrs. Bumblenickel walked slowly up to his desk and handed him a paper. He could hardly bear to look. Felix, you want to, wrote a wonderful story. Would you please share it with the class? Felix grinned and felt a big drop land right in his bucket. Drop. The Gigantosaurus Who Wanted a Pet by me, Felix. Class grew quiet. They laughed at all the right places and ooed at all the scary parts. When Felix finally read the end, everyone clapped. Even Emily, who sat next to him and didn't usually like dinosaurs. Felix felt a whole shower of drops in his bucket. Drop, drop, plink, drop. Maybe the day wouldn't be so bad after all. Kind note for mom. Drop. Team captains today are Veronica and Felix. Drop. Nice cow. It's a dog. Well, nice colors there, Felix. Drip. Cool laser ant backpack, Felix. Drop. Hey, afternoon, Felix's bucket was nearly full. At recess, when he looked around, Felix suddenly realized his grandpa was right. Everyone else had a bucket, too. Here, let me help you. Drop, drop. Here's your baseball. Catch. Drop, drop. Thanks, dude. Hi, I'm Felix. First day? Yeah, I'm a Mar. Drop, drop. The strange thing was that for every drop he helped put in someone else's bucket, he felt another drop in his own bucket.
When Felix burst in the door after school, he shouted, You're right, Grandpa, I do have a bucket, and I understand how it works. But he saw Anna's torn doll. Bad dog, he almost scolded. But then he thought, Dogs might have invisible buckets, too. Your dog will be all right, Anna, said Felix. Mom will fix her. Till then, do you want to help me build the tallest building in the world with my blocks? And so they did. How Full Is Your Bucket by Tom Rath and Mary Rackmeyer.